In this video, I'll show how to approximate instantaneous rates of change graphically using average rates of change. We'll look at the velocity of a baseball after it is thrown and passes by the batter. In particular, we'll try to graph the instantaneous rate of change of distance with respect to time at 400 milliseconds after the ball has been thrown. For the horizontal axis of our graph, we'll use the time since the ball was thrown, measured in milliseconds. For the vertical axis, we'll use the distance from the pitcher in inches. We'll let y equals f of t be the distance of the ball from the pitcher t milliseconds since the ball was released. If we were able to know the position of the ball at any moment, we might get a graph that looks something like this. At 400 milliseconds, the ball was 726 inches from the pitcher. Half a millisecond later, the ball was 726.572 inches from the pitcher. So the length of this blue line segment could be labeled as the amount of change of the function f, or delta f. Now, at t equals 400 milliseconds, the instantaneous rate of change of distance with respect to time is approximated by the average rate of change, which is delta f divided by delta t. Delta f is the difference between the y-coordinates of the two points we graphed. So here, it would be f of 400 plus the additional 0.5 milliseconds minus f of 400. And we divide this by delta t, which is half a millisecond. We already computed delta f to be 0.572 inches. So the formula becomes 0.572 divided by 0.5. Thus, the average rate over this interval of time from 400 to 400.5 milliseconds is 1.1439 inches per millisecond. On the graph, this value is the same as the slope of the line connecting the point at the beginning of the interval and the point at the end of the interval. If we extend the line a bit, we can see that this green line is not exactly the same as the black graph. This is because the green line would model an object that is traveling at a constant speed, whereas the graph of f of t shows that the speed of the ball is decreasing. The green line is called a secant line. The value we computed, 1.1439, is the slope of the secant line and is also the average rate of change of f over the interval from 400 to 400.5 milliseconds. This average rate is an approximation of the instantaneous rate of change. If we've only calculated an approximation of the instantaneous rates of change, how do we get the exact instantaneous rate of change at 400 milliseconds? We can improve our approximation by computing an average rate using a smaller interval of time. The image shows the rate of change over the interval from 400 milliseconds to just before 400.4 milliseconds. Note that the average rate of change over this interval, 1.19, is larger than the previous average rate of change, which was 1.14. We can see this in the graph because the slope of the secant line is now larger than it was previously. Let's move the second point even closer to 400 milliseconds. Note that the average rate has now increased to 1.3 inches per millisecond. Also, the slope of the secant line has become even steeper indicating that the average rate of change over this interval from 400 milliseconds to just before 400.2 milliseconds is even larger. Now, it looks like the secant line almost matches the function over the interval. How close is it? Let's take a closer look. We can see that there is still a difference between the graph of f of t and the green secant line. We know that if we use a small enough time interval, the graph of f will essentially look like a straight line, and the secant line will become a better and better approximation of the graph. What we need to do is to think specifically about the slopes of these secant lines. Graphically, as we make delta t smaller and smaller, the slope of the secant lines get closer and closer to a number. The number they get closer to is the limiting value. It's the slope of what we call the tangent line. Therefore, over a really small interval of time, around t equals 400, the rate of change of amount of distance with respect to elapsed time is virtually indistinguishable from the constant rate of change 
of the linear function tangent to the curve at t equals 400. The slope of this tangent line is the instantaneous velocity at exactly 400 milliseconds after the ball left the pitcher's hand. Now, let's make this whole process a little more formal using the idea of limits. The process of making delta t smaller is called taking the limit as delta t goes to zero. We're claiming that when we do this, the slope of the secant lines get very close to the slope of the tangent line. So, at t equals 400, the instantaneous rate of change is the slope of the tangent line, which would be given by the limit as delta t approaches zero of the change in f over the change in t. This can also be written as the limit as delta t approaches zero of the difference between f of 400 plus the delta t change and f evaluated 400 divided by the change in time. This is also the definition of the derivative of f evaluated at 400. So, the instantaneous rate of change of distance with respect to time at 400 milliseconds can be represented graphically as the slope of the tangent line at 400 milliseconds.